Welcome to the Fashion and Color Show, where we have dynamic conversations with designers and creatives influencing fashion. This show was inspired by our book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, that serves to preserve the history of black designers A to Z. Let's get into the show. Oh, I am so excited to be sitting down with Maxwell Osborne, who, by the way, when I first moved to New York, you were one of those, I feel like I went to an event one time and you were there and I was like afraid to come say hello to you. No way. So, um, you know, we're going to get into just all of the incredible things you've been able to accomplish in fashion. But first, I just want to say welcome. Uh, Maxwell is the creative director and founder of the brand and only child. So welcome. Thank you. How hey, you Bing. doing? Good to see you. Congrats. Good to see you. Thank I'm happy you. happy to be here today on this lovely sunny day. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. And this outfit. Can we get um, into this? This outfit? Yeah, it's some an only child, obviously. We don't really do men's, but we do custom men's. And there's a couple men's pieces we've done that mimic women's. We sell women's currently, but we haven't launched men's yet. So I'm just like the test dummy to everything we do thus far. But these pants, oh my Thanks. gosh. It's, these it's are killer. Lovely. It's one of our new staples, even though we're like a very young new brand, it's still one of our new staples. Yeah, that's, that's dope. Thanks. So Maxwell, so many people know who you are. Um, they've seen your journey from afar. But can you start kind of at the beginning? Like, where are you from? How did you get into fashion? Was it something you always knew you wanted to do? Like, was it in your right. family? Ooh, from the beginning. Yeah. How much time do we have? No, but seriously, from the beginning, I'm here from, I was born here in New York City, Greenwich Village, and then moved to Brooklyn at like five. Wow. Like, we're here in Brooklyn right now. This is my stomping grounds. Um, but I'm born and raised here in New York City. Um, being a designer was never something I dreamed of. I went to art school in between like junior high and my junior high was all art. Then in between that, I went to like art school classes and things like that because it was always something I loved, but never dreamed of like being a designer. Think being a designer for people that look like us or even being from New York, essentially like younger generation didn't, it wasn't a dream, right? Like right. until like Puff and Russell Simmons and FUBU, the FUBU guys, and you know all these brands that started the original urban streetwear um, started that you felt like it was obtainable, and right. that's when I first like got into it. So I, I started working at Tommy Hilfiger Retail. I used to doodle on the floor, you know, see the new clothes come in, new collections, and I'll just sketch things out. And my cousin saw my sketchbook, my older cousin, and she's like, "Why don't you intern at like one of these companies?" She called up her friend that worked at Sean John. And I started an internship in the fabric department, which then later grew to an assistant slash associate associate designer position. A couple like a year and a half later, when I was like nineteen, I think. Wow. Nineteen is like like when I first started having my first salary job. It was at Sean John, um, and that was all by mistake. That was just an eagerness to learn and didn't want to leave the office, and you know was in there whenever somebody just. If I heard somebody was coming in on a weekend, I'm like, can I come in with you? And they're like, wow. cool. So like that that kind of led why I was never formally trained. It's like the design director at the time took me under his wing. He's like, Maxwell, put down the coffee, put down the co the copies. Let me teach you everything I know pretty much. And it was like, I shadowed him for a bit. And that was kind of really, really where it started. Wow. And that's an inclusivity is like key for that, you know, like to each one teach one. Right. And you think about like people's egos and in this fashion game, especially in the early days, I feel like everybody like, has like this tough exterior and doesn't want to pass on the knowledge, but people do that and people want to do that sometimes. And that was like the beginning of the beginning. So that's where I also met Dawi. We worked together for a couple of years at Sean John. Then we broke off a couple of years later separately and then came together while talking about fashion during fashion week and then talked about the birth of public school. And that's when public school slowly was born, where we locked ourselves in Dawi's studio here in Brooklyn at one point for maybe seven to eight nine months like probably stepped out for like three birthday dinners that we both knew mutual people you know like really like locked ourselves up and launched in 2008 spring um and it just kind of caught some steam because it was such a different pace of what was happening everything was kind of soft and colorful yep. and like you know like dainty so there's nothing really hard and meant for us right with with the learnings of like high and low and 
all this like New York attitude that we kind of embodied the melting pot of what New York is because we're both from New York. He's from Queens. I was from Brooklyn. And that was like a big inspiration for us and like the streets of what New York is and the energy. And so we tried to bring that into the brand, which was public school. Years later, we're, we're, we're now working. Well, I'm now working on an only child, our new baby, which is, you know, a little bit more personal, even though public school is very personal. This is more personal in terms of like my upbringing and family and friends around me. You know what was interesting when you guys came out was that it felt like something so fresh just from your looks alone. What? Not the clothing. What? <laughs> like your looks. Yep. And it almost felt like you guys were bringing, um, I mean, you were bringing diversity right. to this industry. You were bringing something that felt very fresh, cool, and new to yeah. fashion. I guess, yeah, right? Because it felt, it was, I mean. I mean, you had never seen it. Right, I'm actually trying to think of like, in our lane, there was like, even like straight designers, maybe. Yeah. You know, even like being a straight, inspiration for some in a weird way like it was kind of like it was you've gotten different. that conversation before like people like oh man it's good to see that and i was just like oh man it's good to see people of color even designing before me so like people to be like oh you could be i don't know it was just weird this is but not this is this is possible it's, it's possible like you guys literally i don't know if you you realize the impact because i mean at the time i was probably what year was that that you guys started in public school when we we started in 2008 there was a break when we started another brand and then we we relaunched in 2012 with fashion weeks and then our first like real runway show was probably 13 or 14 yeah something like something like this so i had just it's started a long time ago, I just know. started harlem's fashion route and i just remember like seeing you and it felt like okay right. i can do this right. they're doing this so this is actually possible so it wow. was, um, you You probably have inspired more people than you even know. Maybe, I don't know. I I know the people that have talked to me about it before, yeah. you know, but you don't really understand the, uh, you don't understand it because you're in it. You know, right. like I think you kind of don't really understand the grasp of the multitude or how big it can be because you're just in it working day in, day out and just, just head to the ground and just having fun while doing it. Let's let's go back to kind of the start of public school because you guys got a lot of support. You got a lot of support from Vogue. You got a lot of support from, you know, in terms of exposure. Let me say that. Right. Um, uh, from the fashion industry at large, it felt like people were really behind what you were doing. Um, what was that process like? So does it look like, from the outside, it looks like you guys came on the scene and immediately people were like, yes. Was it like an instant no. moment of acceptance or what was that journey like? No, not at all. It was a couple of years of just grinding it out and working through it. The Vogue the Vogue piece was, I think it was our second time applying for the Vogue Fashion Fund. And then that year, we, one year we made it to the top 50 or top one, whatever they, I forgot what it was. And they're like, mm, nope. And then we had to call in some favors like Prabhu Garang, who we used to work because we were part of the CFDA incubator program early where we got selected. And that was like when they had the offices and they had like, Pablo Garang and Warris and, uh, and eight other designers on the same floor backed by the CFDA and it was like subsidized rent for entrepreneurs and, and small brands where you start to become like a bond, right? So like mm -hmm. we called Pablo because at that time he won the Vogue Fashion Fund or yeah, he might've just won and we were like, we lost last year. What can we do different? He's like, just invest the money in making your 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 uh, your uh, portfolio the best. You know, we we didn't have money like that. So we were like, you know, we're arts and crafting it, taking books, cutting it out, putting things in it. But then we just really like, okay, cool. So we spent a couple thousand dollars on making our book that told the story of what public school was. It was, And it ended up working as our brand Bible and the brand book, which is good for partners and things like that. Um, but applying to the Vogue Fashion, because we weren't even on the radar for Vogue at that time, you know, wow. until the Vogue Fashion Fund and us winning the Vogue Fashion Fund. So like, yeah, they're going to support you when, you when they're backing you on, you know, they gave us money. Right. Of course, they're going to try to back you in terms of things like that. So... And that's actually why we started doing shows, but um, it wasn't until the Vogue Fashion Fund we got some bigger eyeballs onto the brand. Before it was like some friends that we knew and, you know, because we've also been in the industry for so long, like right. the GQs and the Details Magazines of the world, those editors, they've known us from Sean John. So like there was some synergy there, but like 
it took more when the product was new and it was refreshing to people. I think it was something they haven't seen. Like I think it started with product first. It's like yeah, the support's there, but if they don't like the product, the support's not really gonna help you. You right. know. Right. Um, but it really was Vogue Fashion Fund that really like opened up the door, the, the gates, and like the floodgates opened. You said a couple thousand dollars on the portfolio. Tell us about this portfolio. It was just a brand book. It was a beautiful brand book that we made. It was like just under 11 by 17, you know, designed by our good friend Tina. It was a great graphic artist, art director. Um, and we put together all of our lookbooks and images and, and just made it really nice in our story and what we are about. But it was a hardcover book, but like making a hardcover, you, sh you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you definitely know. Right. But making a hardcover book and right. a sample of one custom is not cheap, you know? It's so not cheap. It was, it was, so you're like, what, excuse me? Right. You know, like you think it was going to be, you think it'd be an easy, easier thing, but we really wanted it bound and really wanted it proper. So we spent the money on making this book in a case just like right. this. And we had it wrapped in leather and like everything that, like leather that we use for our jackets. So everything was like thoughtful and precise and every detail mattered and every page mattered and we created our own font for the book and our table of contents and everything was very, like we spent so much time on that one book. Like it probably like, we didn't design anything else other than working on this one book for Vogue Fashion Fund. And the Vogue Fashion Fund at the time takes up a lot of your time, especially when you want to win. And, you know, so it was a lot of late nights of, you know, fake Q and A's and, right. you know, projects and things like that. But yeah, I'm happy it all paid off. Not Love it. That we won. Love it. But that's really where the floodgates opened. When you think back to your time at Sean John, what are like some of your big lessons? Always be a sponge. My time at Sean John was fun. I think it was, it was a lot of work, but like it or not, like Puff is great. You know, like I've learned a lot from Puff in, in terms of not even him personally, like direct one-on-one, -on -one, but that, that his idea of wanting to do more and be outside of this box. You know, he was like doing fashion shows at Cipriani, Dow and I were both at Sean John when he won the CFDA folk uh, the CFDA award, which is the first African American to ever win, and then until us, probably those was, we were the second, which is f crazy. Crazy. Um, but um, not not Dow, but me, I guess. But right. you know, somebody like that. And so like, Puff was just like, yeah, there was like it's urban, but then he was making all this product to not be in the box of like streetwear or urban wear or mm -hmm. whatever they called it at the time it was like while everybody else stayed in that box like he was doing things that were not like lace and like you know like velour you know like just different things that was like yep. pushing luxury and pushing that idea like even the campaigns he was using when the actors he was using it pushed the, the, the needle up and i think my learning from that is just like don't be scared and push the needle and step into these areas that you're not meant to be in and just and be unapologetic about it. I remember he used to say that all the time, but like pushing that and just be unapologetic and just knowing what you want. I love that. So you were, well, tell me, so once public school, like once that brand closed or, kind of. or, or, or what would you say? Retired? Would you say? He's still, they're still, public school's still around, but Public not. school's still around. Okay. Well, once, you know, you uh, yes. weren't as involved right. in public school, um like from there to actually starting an only child what 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 was that journey that journey was the name was something i had for quite some time it just never formulated into what the vision of the brand was the name is something i always want to use um but it wasn't really until until covid um when you're sitting at home and i always took inspiration from traveling in the streets you know, like I think great, like on planes and showers and Me you too. In, what is it about showers? I don't know. It's uninterrupted. It's like, I think it's because we don't have anything. There's yeah, no just devices. Just, like, just yeah. you by yourself, yeah. you know? Um, but during COVID when everything was shut and there was no, I wasn't getting any inspiration. I, I looked at the books in my house. No matter how many times I looked at the books, I was like, nothing's like catching me or like ex exciting me. It was a dark time, you know? And I was like, how do you get out of this? And I am an only child. So like, it was like, oh, entertain yourself right like as, as you as i did like when you get two toys you'd have an alter ego and just you know be entertained so it started with taking all these fabrics when all the fabric mills were closed all the factories are closed so even if i want to do something just to do something i couldn't we well not we i just went and called some friends up even some old public school fabric and started playing with textiling and called a friend of ours that worked on eileen fisher public school collaboration where we felted fabric 
And I talked to her and I was like, what are you up to? She's like, oh, nothing, just felt incredible. I was like, oh, so I drove out two hours to her house a lot of times and we would just make textiles and work on fabrics with our masks on, masks on and start playing with these textiles. And that kind of grew into what an only child was. It was like taking dead stock, entertaining yourself with nothing. When you have nothing, how do you entertain yourself? You take what you have, you create this own, you create your own world. So it started with like dead stock fabrics and then kind of kept growing into formulating into like, what does that look like? This idea of who do I talk to? Family and friends and close knit friends. So then it became like this idea of like, I'm Jamaican, but less about Jamaica, but this playfulness that my, my elders had, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, that they had when they had nothing and that they, they enjoyed it, right? So I look right. at pictures of them as kids, barefoot going to school, but their their skirts were pre, uh, pressed, but they had no money for shoes, but there was a joy in that. Right. And there was a joy that I was like, damn, this is like, and I would look in my, my apartment and I have like sneakers for days that I haven't even worn yet because like either got gifted or like I bought it or something. And I was like, wow, in one generation, how things have changed and how does that look like to a brand? And how do I tell that story that's so personal that like how things can just change for somebody's life. Like they came up with nothing. Then we're sitting here with a plethora of shoes or while they had no shoes and then brands kind of just started to take form from there and then taking the dead stock fabrics and making the collection. And then we grew out of my apartment to a studio and now we're shipping our second official season to Bergdorf and Sex and Elise Walker and Kith, you know, like, so it's kind of funny how like it's just born out of like, you know, these eight by 10, eight by 11 swatches, and then just keep playing with that and just getting excited from there and just growing that into something else. At what point during the pandemic did you go, okay, this is gonna be a real line? Cause it's one thing kind of like following curiosity, um, you know, playing around with the fabrics, having a good time. It's another thing, especially because you've already had a line before and right. you know how much work it takes for yeah. you to go, I'm actually about to start another brand. Yeah. I think about that often. It's like <laughs> every morning, I'm like, oh, how do I do this? Why do I do this again? No, but you know, when it's inside of you creatively and this, this, it's like a, I don't want to say that word, but it's like a tumor in your brain that you have to get rid of, but you can't like, you feel it and you have to get rid of it. And the only way to get rid of it is to create something. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, I knew the hard work going into it, but I couldn't tell myself, no, like I wish I could, mm -hmm. you know, like I tried, but, and then when I, when it turned into a real line is like when you take the playful samples that we were working on or well, that I was working on and then wanted to do a show for the family, right? Because we've done fashion shows and, you know, like you, 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 you sit front row, but like sometimes talking to our PR, be like, oh, you know, your aunt has to sit second row because we need this seat for the editor. Oh, by the way, can your cousin sit yes. in the third row or can they, can they, and I'm like, man, I kind of do this for the family, you know, down I used to do this for the family. Like, so when, the first thing we did for an only child was during COVID, everybody had to get tested and wear masks. And we went to my family's house in Westchester and Mount Vernon. And we did a show for like 75 people. Wow. And everybody sat front row. All the phones were taken and put into envelopes. We gave out disposable cameras about being just being present and just being there. Cause it's like that moment, I don't know how long we have with them or on light, you know, like in life in general, you know, it's dark times. People are dying right. during COVID. Like you're like, let's just do something. So like to have this moment, with everybody, all, everybody sitting front okay, row. who was there? Tell me some of the people was, who were there. I mean, it was a bunch of, it was all my family. Who in your family? A lot of friends. It was my aunts, my mother, my uncles, cousins, a plethora of my cousins, a bunch of my friends here from New York. Um, whoever was able to come in, stylists like Ron Burton, the Ron Burtons, to Kyle Haglers, to some of our fashion friends that are just in, this, in the mix that all came by to support. Um, you know, Lamar that works with The Weeknd, like anybody that was in New York that was able to come, but we kept it kind of private and kept it fun, where That's it was just so like about, cool. it wasn't sure even about family impressions. were just like. It was more for them, right? Like yeah. just being at a show, like no phones, nobody, like it wasn't about like, oh my God, I'm here. Like it's exclusive. It's nobody else is here. Let me post this to the gram and not be present. Like, no, everybody was, everybody brought their kids and it was like very much, and it turned into like a barbecue after oh, that's and so drinks. Cool. It was like a whole day, you know, like, and that was like the launch. And I was like, all right fuck, we kind of have to like do this in a real way. Like, you know, before we did it, as much as I'd like to do things perfect, it was like shittier samples. You know, some of the fits weren't perfect. Was the, Well, the idea was also quick, you know, right. it was like, let's just do it. And then it turned into a bigger thing, but everybody really came together in such a short time. And at the time, Julia Ragula styled it, who does Xenia, she's awesome. You know, she was like, somebody recommended her and we talked, we 
on the phone. She was like hyped, and we're like, "Oh, this is awesome!" So she made something out of nothing. Um, and where did was, you guys do it at? Was it in the and, backyard? It was or? like, and we did it through the back. It was like through the house. So like, the second floor was like hair and makeup. Down this, there's like a spiral staircase in my aunt's house. So they came down the stairs, through the house, and then back outside. So people were sitting inside and outside. In the backyard or in the then, front? And, to the backyard okay. or to the driveway or whatever, okay. however the house is shaped. Um, so it was like a, a little bit of inside to outside. And then it was just like this moment of just like, I guess we should do this a little bit bigger in a real way. You know, like also looked at all the money we spent, but um, it was just fun. It was just for that moment to have, you know, my family just there and happy. And that's like, oh, so cool. Is. So that's kind of how I grew officially from there. Cause I was like, oh, I guess if we do this, you can't lock up people's phones. I love that. I, I love, love, love. I did not know that origin story. Yeah. Um, that's really dope. Really dope. Now, in two years, you just mentioned, who are all the stores? Where you carry? So right now, our biggest retailers are Bergdorf, Saks, Kith, and Elise Walker. Um, so like slowly getting into more specialty. And really, Bergdorf has been a great partner for here in New York. Saks has been a great partner throughout. Um, and really just trying to control the brand, grow it up properly, pace is, pace is key, try not to try not to burn out too crazy. Even, you know, the way we look at inspiration in the office, it's, you know, usually you look at season to season and drop to drop is like a different inspiration, but sometimes inspiration doesn't have to be so far from the past, you know? So it doesn't have to be, this is one season and then it has to jump so much from right. to the next. And I think every season has been a gradual, consistency of what we talk about with the brand and like our first season when we showed at the house and like we used that season to launch again really like we called it welcome home because welcome home the show we did for spring 2023 was based on the idea of what the house was with different product you know like the idea of being at the house and having everybody under the sun and you know from elders to young all hanging out together friends not friends and not friend uh friends and family all together that that show was basically that, right? So that that show seems like a bunch of ideas in it, but that's why, because we wanted it to be like this house party, this house gathering, a dinner, where everybody from old to young could all fit in the same box. And let's try to show that on the runway with what twenty looks. It's always tough, um, but um, every season is like dialing it in a little bit more. So that was the Welcome Home collection on purpose. So it's telling the story, and Only Child is like the beginning of the story. That it's like cool. You're telling everybody about this 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 Welcome Home, and then you kind of go down to like our last season right now that we're showing is spring 24, which is just called Sunday, you know, and it's called Sundays for a reason, like the lounge, you, you're just chilling at home and it's based on sets. And it's the idea of like, just being loungy, like you could step out to brunch, you could come home from, from church and just put something quick on. And it's that idea from like, what is that party? Like if you partied Saturday and then like, what does your Sunday look like? And this is like the outfit, but it's like season to season is how we think about it. So like the inspiration is kind of like this story of like living, in a oh, way, not not like, oh, the season's about um the beach in San Tropez, you know, like it's really like true and it comes from the heart and comes from something that we've lived and, and it's personal. I can feel it. Really? Like every time I see um, pieces from your collection, it feels a so much like you. Really? And it it's feels. It's so colorful though. But. Really wear color. But it, maybe so, but it still has like this very cool vibe. Right. And um, I am uh, really excited for where the brand is going to go. Me too. Nervously excited. Nervously excited. So if you had to describe the brand, how would you describe it? Hmm. How do we describe it? It's a playful, it's a playful brand based on ideas. And it's since we use dead stock, it's like, um, it's basically the past recreating the future and we use that in the sense that like we don't take from anywhere so even some of the styles and and fabrication is based on something in the past usually like i have pictures of my mother and my aunts and uncles on our mood board and then we'll take something from the eras of like the 60s 70s up to the 80s and then tweak it into so what it is that we look at now we've done a print with like a mesh marina but on silk it's like what if what is what's true to to the past that we like and then like what does that look like to the future now, especially growing up here in New York City, you know, with the high and the low of, you know, high rises to projects, that the mixture of what New York is, like it's come from a penthouse and then get right on the train and it's just like 
worlds apart what does that look like in a collection you know like obviously i took the train here so you could think about that always <laughs> uh -huh. um but how does that live in a collection how does that look in a collection of people you know migrating to to new york and being here for the first time and how do they how does that translate from the past into the present so the brand is pretty much a playful idea on ideas and 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 just kind of being open to a lot of different ideas and not being so buckled down into um a true aesthetic even though the aesthetic will be coming through my filter which is pretty much gonna be the same as it always has but you know being open to different ideas like where i wouldn't have been in the past so excited on like a bigger sleeve and and like um a way larger silhouette where we play with fit here it's like the idea of pass me down mm -hmm. is also something key so you'll see that in our in the collection where things are either bigger or smaller because as Jamaican, we always just send them barrels down to Jamaica. So everything, yeah. is, the clothes is always bigger or smaller. So like, you'll see like a lot of ruching or like crop jackets or things that were like were meant to be for you, but then you, you make it your own somehow. Like, so a bigger blazer, but then you add pin tucks. So you shape, you know, you give it some shape. So we play with things like that, where it's like, things are like meant for you, but you make it your own or it wasn't meant for you. And then you make it your own in a, way, in a weird way. Love that. So you've been in this industry, how many years now? Do we want to say it's been what? Wow. It's, <laughs> I've, I've never actually thought about that, but every, as we just talked about Sean John and not giving away my age, we're about 20 years. 20, <laughs> 20, 20 years in this industry. Wow. I want you to close <laughs> us out on what does it take? What do you think it takes? Because somebody is watching this and, you know, they may have a niece that wants to get into fashion or they may want to get into this industry themselves. What does it take to really make it what in does fashion? It take, what does it take to make it yeah, in fashion? Ugh. What does it take to make it in fashion? I don't know. I'm still trying to get there myself. But I think it does take a point of view, mm -hmm. you know, something that's true and that can be taken from you because... People will take things, it's fashion, you know, you have fast fashion at a time. So anything could be taken from you. Consistency. Um, probably some money behind you if you do start. But also I think point of view is key. I also think when people want to get into it, working for somebody prior to even trying to start your own thing to find your voice is key. Like I think, you know, down I never planned on starting public school and being like designers outside of another brand, but that just came about, you know, like the, the, it wasn't something we thought about until it was time to think about it. Um, same with the Only Child, like I didn't think about doing a solo brand until COVID hit and then it was time to think about it. Um, so I think it's like experience is, experience is key to even find out if you really want to do it because right. it's not easy. It really is. And like, people see the glitz and glamour, but you don't design the entire year. You know, you might design a month, two months out of a year, right. and you're doing everything else, the rest of it. So the design process is probably the most fun process in the creating and, and, and watching it, you know, grow into something else, the show maybe, or the images or whatever you, you get out of it. That's the best part, or watching somebody wear it. Um, But everything in between is not as fun. Being in those factories is not as fun. People think it's really fun. It's, <laughs> it's really not sometimes. It's like, you have to find your you have to find your joy in it, which I do. Like some working with some factory owners are great, some aren't, you know. Right. Um, but really, I think it's like finding your voice, finding your finding your passion, and, and holding on to it because that's what's going to keep you going and keep you sane in this crazy world to keep going to do it. Because you see people get burnt out and just run run away and be like, I gave up when like the, it, all it took was like the next season to really like be something bigger, you know. And, and I'm even tell you, it feels like the hardest times come right before the biggest right. breakthroughs. Yeah, we we stopped public school at one point before we relaunched it again, you know, like, and because we had another line at Black Apple at the time. And it was like, no, but it didn't feel right. Like, we knew it had to come, we had to come back for it. And it wasn't sitting, in, you know, it wasn't sitting on our mouths right. So I think it's just, you just know, like, your point of view, if it's not, yeah. Because you knew, like, for us, it was like the point of view had to come out. It had to, it was right. like, Right. It's just sitting there. So I think your point of view as a young designer, a new designer is, is key and in, in owning your voice. I love that. I love that. Where can people find you, follow you, and also shop the collection? Uh, you could shop some at only, and only com. Bergdorf, Sachs, Kiff, Elise Walker. Um, you could find me 
anywhere in these streets of New York City. <laughs> Maxwell Osborne, I'm not hard to find. Um, Your Instagram? It's at Maxwell Osborne. O-S-B-O-R-N-E. Thank you so much, no, Maxwell. Thank you. This, this means ball. the world to me. Um, this was so great. I've never had you in a hot seat before. Was this, this a hot was, seat? <laughs> you didn't know. I'm telling you now. Uh, <laughs> and and thank you it's so much comfy. for being featured in the book. No, so thank you. Let me, thank hold you. On, let, me, let me find your page. Can someone get me an ink pen? Uh, I would love for him no, to sign his page it. for me. Um, if someone has We're a Sharpie. Not. We're not I would we don't have to sign. To just like this sign is fun. This, sign this for me. Let's see where are you at. That was in the middle somewhere. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah. We will sign this. <laughs> this is good. Wow. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. That's crazy. Yeah, no, this is like a special book. What are you saying? We're in the same outfit. Well, um, that is a wrap for this thank episode you. of the Fashion and Color Show. Maxwell, thank you thank so you. much for being with us. Thank you for that. Um, I'm excited. I have not formally shopped at Only Child yet, but Please. it's coming in the spring. You will see me Please. in the collection. And I encourage all of you to shop an only child as well. Thank you. Thank you.